We're talking actors and directors who put on the shows. We're talking playwrights and designers who you'll want to know. From the very first rehearsal to the final curtain call. We, we might, might be off, 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 off Broadway, but we're talking about it all. Because we're two local gals with global pal. It's everything, everything, everything here. With Benita and Ellen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everything Theater Podcast Backstage episode. I'm Ellen Cribbs. And you're backstage with Benita Zahn as well. Hi, everybody. Woo, woo. This is one we promised we were going to do, and, you know, the ladies keep their promise. That's right. We were uh, we chatted with Adam about pre-Tonys, and then the Tonys happened, and last year we did a post-Tony episode. We said, you know, that was fun. Let's bring Adam back on. Let's chat about the night. You got to tell everybody who Adam is. Adam, yes, Adam, Adam Dermer. Everybody actually, knows. You know, I said Adam Dermer in our last episode, and that is not your full name anymore. Uh, it's Adam Prado Dermer. Well, so it's it's Dermer, but I say Dermer Prado as well for social okay. media purposes. <laughs> because last time Le- you were not married, don't. last time we spoke to you last year. Right? Um. Uh, no, I got, it was October 21, I got married. Oh, so we messed it up last year, too. <laughs> <laughs> we had no, a second chance. Fine. Third chance. <laughs> but, yeah. No, I just changed it on social media. It's not legal. You can call me whatever you want to call me. It's fine. I call you for cocktails. <laughs> I know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and Adam does when he's not talking to us. I work in musical theater licensing. Just had to get all that out there. Yeah. I know, which we need to talk to you about sometime too. We've had a little chats recently about rights and all that on the show that we should get oh, your insight on that at some point. It's a it's a wild war- world and lots to learn still. And I've been in the company for a couple of years now and I'm still learning lots and lots. So I'd be glad to. So the Tonys. What the we Tonys. Think? Immediate reaction? Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. I liked how quick the the act one, they called it. I don't know if you watch act one. It was quick, efficient. They had 15 minutes left until 8 p.m. Loved it. Yeah. But they, yeah, I thought I was, I liked it. I like, I definitely support the writers, but I didn't miss some of the banter, written banter this time around. 100% agree. I was like, this is speedy and it's giving everybody time to talk and be acknowledged. And we don't need all the extra I had only one that I thought got short shrift. Mm. And that was the Lifetime Achievement with Joel Gray. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think, Uri? No. Kander. Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah. It was John Kander and Joel That's Gray. Right. Uh, I thought they got short shrift because nobody wrote uh, a tribute to them. Uh, uh, that to me was the only thing that was yeah. a little lacking. But otherwise, they got in, got out. On time, I I'm with you guys. I thought I know we were. I was saying the the Daily News critic thought it was a snore. I want to know what show he was watching. Hmm. Yeah. Also, the Daily News take that with a grain of salt. So, because I felt that the performances from the shows were maybe a little longer than they normally are. Was I crazy? But it felt like I was like, oh, these numbers are like. I think so too. Sense. Yeah, and it was nice to like really get to see the shows. What was also nice, and I think we talked about this last year, one thing, and I never really knew how to fix it, but they never showed stuff from plays, or at least for recent years they haven't. But this year, I mean, it was minor. It was very small little clippets and snippets, but I loved hearing from authors. I loved hearing a little bit about the play rather than just, this is the play, move on, let's get to the musicals. You know, it was yeah. it was really nice. Absolutely, I agree that it, it this year more than ever i've been like oh i got a sense of what that play was and whether yeah. i would like to go see that play <laughs> let me ask did any of you realize what a spectacular dancer ariana debose was i mean i, I did yes. i knew she was good <laughs> I, yeah. I knew but i just thought it was okay i thought she was one step above even <laughs> I did feel for her, though, to have to do that intro after that huge dance. It took a while to catch her breath. I was like, oh, poor, poor lady. (laughs) But she did great. But she's a pro. Like, she has so much experience under her belt. 
that was probably she was like all right i got this i mean she launched herself off of a staircase <laughs> it was amazing i audibly gasped. i loved I was it like, oh I, my god <laughs> i love the opening i thought it was engaging we got to see the theater like really important that you know they the tonys were at this theater um this year and yeah they, i loved how they kind of showed her around a little bit by doing that and just featuring dancers yeah that's very cool in terms of winners and losers I th it was you we really nailed it adam i went on on my ballot off a lot of what you said i was like oh i got so many right <laughs> thank you adam <laughs> i i had a couple surprises and i i did a few ballots i did like a couple online we had a well we do a ballot at work because it's musical theater and that's what we do so this is kind of like our uh super bowl so we we did a ballot at work and i got 20 out of 26 right at work but 22 out of 26 on my online ballot because i i switched a few things around so yeah, myself and one other co-worker <laughs> we were we, myself and one other person were tied at work so <laughs> for the for first place so i was close so close <laughs> but i think if I may just launch into my biggest surprise of the night um, was Top Dog Underdog winning Best Revival. Yeah. I don't, a lot of people called it. I just, I think because I didn't see it, it wasn't so much on my radar, but it was great that she, uh, Susie, Laura, uh, Susie Laura Parks finally won a Tony. Yeah. And that's, that's a great show. As, as I mentioned in the last episode, Black Theater Shoot recently did it here. That production was phenomenal. I would have given that a Tony if we could have, you know, yeah. but yeah. So I guess it doesn't surprise me that that show would do so well. Um, but I'm, I'm glad I'm very happy for them. One of your toss ups was parade and it did win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and director uh, for that. I mean, as soon as director, uh, as soon as Michael Arden won for director, I knew the, it would win for revival, but it was, it was very well, well-deserved. Mm -hmm. Any surprise, I'm trying to think how you, your selections were that um, uh, Some Like It Hot um, didn't really take home much. You know, best mm. supporting performer um, went to, and, and both non-binary, uh, the, there were two non-binary actors direct, uh, who mm -hmm. were nominated and both won in their category. Um, yeah. Yeah, Alex Newell was from Shut, and uh, mm -hmm. Jay Harrison Gee was from, uh, or G, I think it's pronounced G, uh, from Some Like It Hot. I The winners, what Some Like It Hot won is pretty much what I was expecting. I think it had a lot of fire behind it because um, it it had won a bunch of other awards, but I, we talked about this last week. Uh, Kimberly Akimbo wasn't eligible for a lot of those because it had previously won off-Broadway, So, which tends to happen more and more these days i like the past several years it's kind of often been like that um but some like it hot choreography well deserved um um uh, jay harrison key um what else oh my gosh what else did it i know oh uh orchestrations and yeah choreography and orchestrations yeah 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 and by the yeah, way, it so was it, viewed, uh, just to quickly, you know, I'm not the numbers girl, so I always double check. Uh, for ratings, it was 4.31 million this time versus 4.22 uh, the year before. These are two years now that the show's gotten a bump. Um, okay. You know, I, I'm so glad to hear you say that because I saw an article shortly after about how it was something like a 10% decrease in watchers. And then I saw another article that negated that and said it was an increase. It was straight, I forget who published which article. Obviously the decrease was incorrect, but it was very strange. I was like, there's no way that it could have lost that many viewers. And mm -hmm. I, it, it didn't, it, it, it was wrong, but it was the first article I saw come out afterwards. And I thought that was It was not, no, wow. this was, uh, I, I just I'm looking at it as we're talking. 4.31 yeah. million, that's a slight improvement. And yeah, which is really strange. quite encouraging. Um, Kim? Because, did, does it have any statistics of how many people watched Act One on Pluto? Good idea. Let me curious. take a look, see. Uh, these I had are, to frantically these are download CBS. Pluto. <laughs> you know, that's a hard number to figure when you're on a streaming service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, a little bit easier. 
Um, let me see. So are the awards stream live on Paramount streaming service? Yeah, just what I said. <laughs> Detailed yeah, viewer yeah. numbers not available. Um, but CBS says the live stream grew 13% over the prior year. Mm. Oh. Okay. So, you good. know, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And um, let me just take a Sunday, a slight 2%. Yeah, the numbers sort of dance around, but mm -hmm. interesting. Short, it did okay. I mean, really, the only thing with Pluto that annoyed me was that it was like live. You kind of had to watch it live. You couldn't pause it or anything, and so that was prime putting kids yeah. to bedtime. <laughs> I was like, I yeah, watch. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our internet went down. We had some oh, issues, no. and I thought, no. So you know, we started watching it on the phone. <laughs> oh yeah. And then came back and was like, Whoo. I said, I can't. I called the cable guy. I'm like, no, you don't understand. It's, you know, it's Tony Award night. Yeah. The young man That's was it. so nice. He goes, oh, oh. I'm so sorry. Wow. He's like, ma'am, I don't know what that is. No, he apparently, <laughs> he was a good faker. He's like, let me see if I can get somebody out there tonight. <laughs> well, well, did well, I, Ellen, you saw Pluto or didn't? I did. One? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so right before i don't know if you noticed they had liza minnelli in new orleans yeah. playing right before which i thought was amazing pre-tony fodder if you will but it was and she sang new york new york and world goes round and that right. i was like oh well, that's a fun little tie-in like someone somebody was thinking about that before yeah. <laughs> for programming's sake <laughs> good for you pluto yeah <laughs> let me give a shout out to a local celeb richard gotta Yes. who is uh, a, grow, grew up in uh, Niskayuna and has been, he did swing forever. And then uh, toward, at the end of the run was uh, hired full-time for Music Man. And his wife had been in uh, Phantom. And now he's in New York, New York. And he was on stage performing the opening number. Yeah. So bravo, Richard. Well, oh, that's great. I was speaking of Phantom, though, using um, Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again for the memorial. I, uh, I was just a ball of... Beautiful. Yeah, it was beautiful. And I love that they had her sing it because I, I didn't know she she had such a beautiful head voice mm. uh, or mix, really. I, I mean, last we saw her do was Paradise Square last year when she won. Was it last? It was last year, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And her songs were more more chest and belty. So hearing her do that and do it so beautifully, I was like... What can this woman not do? I mean, it's amazing. Right. Yeah. Also, so what else? I say one highlight for me uh, in the act one, unfortunately, probably a lot of people didn't see it, was the um, the teacher. I, I didn't write his name down, but the teacher who was recognized um, through the Carnegie Mellon Award uh, yeah. and his speech about how he makes theater as accessible as possible um you know so people who you wouldn't think could run light design because of their vision impairment you know give them a chance you know all these kind of things um i think that was a very important conversation to have we've talked about this a little on the podcast too about making theater as accessible as possible and i'm really glad that got recognized and kudos to that teacher especially for sharing that and teaching that young i think he it's high school but by imparting that onto younger people, then hopefully professional theater will expand to be much more accessible. You know, I hopefully those kids will get out there and, and change things because that would be fantastic. Jason Zembuck Young, mm -hmm. artistic director of the Public South Plantation High School in Plantation, Florida. Yes. That's like, wow. Yeah. There's so many reasons. <laughs> yeah yeah so Alan, this is something ellen and i have talked about and we thought we might talk about it in a upcoming show and here podcast and here we are we had two non-binary performers uh each win in their uh respective categories so do we do away with best actor best actress and you know, male, female roles? Do Does the Academy just roll it all in? Where are we? What do you think? I think things are going to change, especially after the two 
quote unquote actor categories in a musical were won by non-binary persons this year. I think they have to. And also I loved what they were both wearing so much because it also turned like the gender norms on on its head, right? Especially for what is being shown on on a big broadcast and for these gender labels for the awards. Um, Alex Newell said in an interview, I believe, I, I don't think I'm making this up, I'm pretty sure <laughs> this was Alex, but said that uh, they chose to, uh, they, they were able to choose the category they could be considered, right? And so um, I, I think he, she, and they are their pronouns, so um, just to throw that out there. Um, and so by choosing best actor, uh, they made a point to say, I'm an actor. That's what I do as a profession. Why do we have to, and, and discussing, why do we have to make a comparison between actor and actress? Personally, I've never really liked that. And I think, I'm, yeah, Ellen, you're shaking your head. So I assume you agree with that. I, we're all actors. Why does it have to be defined by gender? So I think by hearing them say that I'm an actor and that's just what I do then yes, best actor. As a, as a female, I, I've always despised the term actress. Uh, because I mean, you don't call a female painter a paintress. You don't right. call a female conductor a conductress. You know, like that gender distinction is not seen in so many other occupations. And uh, this is a, a funny little story. Um, I had the license plate actor and Adam knows this because he used <laughs> to have it and I stole it from him. <laughs> <laughs> in Virginia. Um and but people funny would stop, and embarrassing. Funny and embarrassing. <laughs> and people would stop me and be like, Don't you mean actress? And that used to make me so angry. I was like, No, I'm an actor. That's what I do. You know, why does it why it's does a it make diminutive me in a way? It it yeah. just yeah. yeah. I'm I'm no argument. No argument. I, I, yeah, the differentiation is foolish and archaic and you know what i also hear with it too is when people say that and even ellen the way you just said actress there was something like ah degrading or like i there's something about the s because i hear less every time mm -hmm. and especially i think people not purposely all the time but i think some people do like you said like don't you mean actress you know there's I, there's something about that. It's just, why do we give, uh, why do we you allow that tool to be used against performers who are 100% equal? I don't. It's it's such a word thing, but I I think it's foolish, and I do hope they make changes. So then, one category with as double the amount of nominees. I mean, why not? And double. I'm just well, asking. Double and multiple winners. winners, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. then then it could be anybody because we look at some of these categories and uh, some of them i think when we talked about a little a uh, little bit in our last episode i didn't know who was going to win a couple because some people were just so great so maybe one year you're going to have two maybe even more winners why don't why don't we do four who knows but say they stick with two maybe you'll have two uh female identifying actors win and no male identifying actors win. Oh, well, if they had the best performances, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, it's, it's a big, awesome conversation with, I think, a lot of options available. And I think, hopefully, the committee will start having those conversations. I think they already have a little bit. And you know what, I think even beyond gender, which is, I think, the most important element here, but I think that even opens the options for the types of performers who get recognized, because I was talking to someone about the Tonys, and they're like, I feel there should be a comedic, you know, category versus the dramatic, because so many times the dr drama wins over the comedy, you know, so if you have just a list of performers, and people get to vote for two to four people, they might be more inclined to add that comedic performance into the fold as opposed to saying ah oh, just that one really dramatic performance you know like so we might see more variety in types of performances recognized as well i mean other awards do that it'll just yeah. be distinguished performer and it'll be 40 names and two people win i forget which ones they are but it exists so why not why not make those changes humans hate change Mm. That's true. 
and mm -hmm. yes, especially institutionalized uh, mm -hmm. things. It is really hard to to dig up those foundations, but hopefully that's starting to happen. And also, it's just important to make sure everybody feels on the same level and comfortable, I think, yeah. and, and welcome. Actually, bouncing off what you were saying, um, there's uh, another non-binary performer in Anne Juliet that plays May, um, who, uh, um, ha oh, I'm trying to compare them to a Shakespeare, which Shakespeare character, I forget. Anyway, it's, oh, it's the, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. okay, we'll come back to this. But anyway, there's a non-binary performer that plays this character, May, and they were asked, which category they would want to be considered in it for consideration and they they said neither so they essentially withdrew themselves mm -hmm. from consideration which is a shame because that person is fantastic so it, it's just things like that where you're kind of you you're going to take people out of the running who really de deserve recognition because they just didn't feel comfortable identifying in either category they right. ca they identify an actor Right, right. And don't we all or don't they all? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny when we started doing the podcast and somebody said to me, oh, who do, who's your co-host? I said, oh, a fellow actor from when I did Shakespeare in Love. And then I said, Ellen Cribbs. And there was a momentary pause. This goes back earlier in the, the life of this, because when I said fellow actor, they thought I was going to say, I don't know, Jim, you know, or John or something. No, fellow actor, Ellen. Yeah. I don't get that now. Now, this mm -hmm. is, what are we, three, four years into this, Ellen? Mm -hmm. I'll say, oh, yeah, my, my co-host is a fellow actor. Oh, who? Ellen Cribbs. Oh, you know, I've seen her. I know of her. I would like to hear. So we're slowly moving there, mm -hmm. even in Albany. Yeah. <laughs> And you, and I think it's the theater crowd that will make this change first more than like if, if we're thinking about theater versus Hollywood. I think the Tonys will be the first to make adjustments to this before the Oscars. Given who what, what we saw in terms of type of show that was nominated in one, Adam, give us if you can look into your crystal ball. What do you see for the coming, you know, 12, 18 months on Broadway? Um, what you expect we'll see more of or uh, more likely for producers to take a chance on? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I think we're still coming out of pandemic mode. I think a lot of it's cleared and it's a different landscape than it was obviously a few years ago and it's still evolving. And I think everyone's trying to figure that out. And I think about after after 9-11, Mamma Mia brought Broadway back to life. Like it saved Broadway. Mm. And so I always think, well, not always, but since the pandemic, I, I've been like, what is that show? What is that show that, that saved it? And I don't know that there was one in particular. I, I think when theater started to open again, a lot of audiences started to come back for certain shows, but it was, it seems to be the audiences at least are going to the sh shows that they just want pulled out of real life. They just want the joy and the fun, like um, some like it hot is, is doing really well. And it's just a beautiful, joyful show also with a really brilliant message. Um, yeah. Whereas like the, the little more intense plays, except for Leopold Stott, which is an enigma that I, I can't quite put my finger on. Um, because it has been running for a long time and it is a very serious play, uh, I, I, which tends to not happen as much. But yeah, I think it's the bigger fun musicals that people right now at least are looking for. I mean, or, or something with just like weight and name behind it, like Sweeney Todd, uh, not a fun musical, <laughs> but a brilliant musical with a lot of history, you know? Because um, I feel like some stuff tends to be closing pretty quickly. I'm actually curious, we were just talking about this at work today, when announcements are gonna start to go out, because there's some shows that unfortunately hold out for the Tonys, and if 
nothing comes of it for them, they're just not able to financially stay sustain. We saw right after the nominations, right? There were so many closing announcements yeah. that week. Yeah, yeah. good Leopold, point. I'm sorry, Leopold Stott, um, that its appeal is because it's about identity at the heart of it. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, but it it also just has it is a very specific Jewish story, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's also just a story about family. And I think everybody can relate to that, but it's also Tom Stoppard. So I, which I should have mentioned before, which that is a big name to have onto it as well. And I think it's just, it's got a great producing team that is just pushing it, pushing it. I mean, it, it's, it's a lovely play. I, like I said last time, it wasn't my favorite this season, but it's still good. I think it's, um, is it through July or is it longer now? July. I I don't yeah. know if they extended, but it was through July. Yeah. And Fat Ham recently extended a little bit into July, too. I was hoping that would get something, but unfortunately, it's not. Mm. Yeah, it was uh, the overall. I mean, I, I, I was a, hoping for a few more surprises along the way uh, with some of these awards. Um, actually, I when I talked to you last I had I said I saw my last show of the season and turned out that did not end up being the case and I went to see um a sign in Sydney Brewstein's window on oh. on Sunday afternoon and I was very excited because I was like oh good Miriam Silverman is slated everyone says she's probably gonna win so I can't wait to see her she wasn't in and uh, of course I mean it's Tony <laughs> day she wanted to take her day she deserves it and every and of course, so I did not get to see her, unfortunately, but the play was really good. Um, I knew nothing about it. So it was Oscar Isaac and um, and Rachel Brosnan are fantastic in it. That's a wise and a, maybe some might say even a gutsy choice for Rachel Brosnan to have taken coming out of Mrs. Maisel. It's definitely a, a statement that says, Yes, I, I did that role, but I'm that's not it. I'm not a one trick pony. Mm -hmm. See me as an actor. Mm -hmm. and there's yeah. so much more to what I'm bringing. So so much more to my craft and what I'm bringing to to an audience. I, I thought that was a smart a smart move on her part. As I call you it know, the, the Daniel Radcliffe move is what I call that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, and just to look forward to what's coming this season, we've got Merrily We Roll Along. Right coming up as the big um i i think it's going to be the big heavy hitter revival wise i saw it at you know, new york theater workshop back in december and it was spectacular Who and did I, you I remember pay off for a ticket adam <laughs> it's the business <laughs> the business <laughs> that's all it's uh it's one of our titles uh at work so um and we work with the sondheim estate pretty closely so um, we were, I was very lucky. I didn't think it was going to happen. I honestly tried to buy tickets the second they went on sale and they were gone instantly. And luckily an opportunity, I was so lucky to have an opportunity come up at work. Um, and it's one of those shows. I remember seeing it in college. Uh, I think, I don't know what year it was, but they did it at my college. Not a show that I think really works well for college performers because there's so much history behind it. And I remember just not really liking it so much and this time around i kid you not i couldn't speak at the end of the show i was so emotionally like just wrecked in act two but my co-worker who was with me was very wrecked in act one it was a really interesting like talk we got to have a little bit about it afterwards but oh it's such a it's just such a good show so i i both of you, when it opens, make it a priority. Go see it, please. <laughs> Which is interesting because wasn't that like the biggest flop of Sondheim's yes. career? Yes. Yeah. Or one of them. I don't know if it was or the one biggest. Of them. Yeah, but I think there's like a whole documentary yeah. about it, like how yeah. how it flopped. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. We could just do a whole Sondheim show because Company wasn't a big success. <laughs> oh, that's true, right? Yeah. You know, um, what's the word? Pacific Overtures? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. but that's what he does i mean yes this is a somber, somber conversation but it 
it, it's interesting how his shows speak to people differently and in different times in their life. I mean, I truly think Into the Woods has been my favorite Sondheim for many, many years. And when I saw Mer Merrily, I was like, oh, wait, maybe this is my new favorite as I enter, a, come close to entering a different decade in my life. You know, um, it, it really spoke to me as someone, I think, at my age and the friendship that the three of them have. It was, uh, it's it's a wonderful show. Real quick, speaking of Into the Woods, when they did the number from it on the Tonys, I was like, that's right. I remember how mad I am that that puppeteer is not nominated for anything. But yes. Yes, he's so good. I couldn't stop watching Milky White the whole time I watched the performance of, you know, on, on Broadway. If you could go back, if it's on TV or you have it recorded, watch it again, but watch the puppeteer, just him rather than the puppet. Yeah. He, he like breathes he, with them. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, he is. So, oh, it's so beautiful. I mean, the, all of them are great. I, the way Sarah Bareilles approaches that music is just like is so moving. But um, but yeah, the way he looks at the puppet, which is obviously puppet one hundred and one. You know, you're when you're manning a puppet, you're focused on it, not. But he's he, that guy is great. I don't remember his name, but he's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think, and then I was gonna say, my only other surprise of the night was that they they actually cut off Jason Robert Brown. I couldn't believe they let him talk. <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, that was a, a choice. <laughs> that was a choice. <laughs> that was that was a choice. Also, Janine Tesori did not get enough time to talk. Mm. Um, Kimberly Akimbo won several awards, obviously, and they were the first to uh, win for for best book. Um, and she didn't, I don't know, I wanted to see her talk a little bit more because she's a legend in in musical theater canon now, you know? Yeah. She's you know, written so much great stuff. I think what happens sometimes in those shows when it's live directed, if there is a breath, they think, okay, we're done, we're close to time, move on. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. one of the, and I don't remember which uh, honoree uh, made a comment, goes, oh, I'm already, I'm already hit time, you know, and. Oh, it was director. Oh, yeah. Who was that? Um, yes. Because he made a, a very long joke. Yes. <laughs> it kind of kept going. I was like, you're running out of time. Oh, for Leo Polstadt? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And then, uh, right. Patrick Marber. Yeah. And then one of that, I'm going to go back to the Daily News critic, you know, oh, and you know, Ariana DeBose didn't even remember who she was throwing it to. Now, the fun, you remember she was taking the, you know, the picture and the, you know, the selfie. To, I found it amusing, and maybe my friends are all of the same ilk, but everybody found that to be a genuine moment. They loved the transparency. They loved the spontaneity of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And I think I perhaps agree. that's why the show worked this year for we three, because of a spontaneity. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so hackneyed, really. And no, yeah. and no. It really felt like a community just coming together to celebrate. Yeah, and every, mm -hmm. everyone this year. Well that's, that's what I got felt. Yeah. yeah, and in such capable hands because she's done it. She, she she's an Oscar winner now too, which I I love. Um, I but what you're referring to when she had the names written on her arm and she couldn't read it. She was like, I don't know. And now whoever is going to come out on stage next? <laughs> I don't know what the note <laughs> it was is. So charming. It was so charming. Yeah, because sometimes you write notes, you know, and I've been known to do that. And you, you're yeah. a little cryptic and like, what did I mean by that? Which I think is what happened with her. <laughs> yeah. Well, she was just running down the, coming in the aisle. So she was probably like, real quick, who am I introducing? Just so I don't forget. Because she has so right. much going on. And she's yeah. like, I don't know, whoever comes out. <laughs> and Lin-Manuel is right great. next door. And like the expression on his face was just beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yes. It's just, they were all having a good time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it so seems now, like people we, were we, having a good time, a yes. really good time. So look, yeah. you don't want the, you want the strike to be over. You want the writers to have mm -hmm. gotten a contract that they can live with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and that was talked about there as well. But I hope that the powers that be are listening to the voices of the audience mm -hmm. and don't gob it back up next year. Yeah. Yeah. Just just find a way to use writers a little in this specific case a little differently. They'll still be used, you know, but maybe keep that in mind that we don't need the all the 
jokes that don't always land and the airspace i you know it's just maybe just find a new formula that works a little bit more in 2024 it's gonna be 2024 that's crazy let yeah. ariana <laughs> debose dance yeah yes please <laughs> anytime good notes on the prompter you know? <laughs> yeah. well a good time was had by all indeed it was it really was i it was a nice settling evening I guess I, I, like I said, I, I was hoping for some more surprises to change it up, but it was pretty much as, as expected, but deserved, you know, so many of these, all of these shows deserve so much rec recognition. And I, actually something stupid I would love to throw out there. I, um, the shucked performance. I love that this show will not give away what the show is actually about in, in their publicity. They, Yes, it's about corn, but there's there's more than that. But <laughs> there, whoever is doing their um, advertising, I think it's brilliant. And the fact that they chose that song is that people are like, is it just about corn? <laughs> it's just, I love it. It's like no, a but a little go corn see dancing. It. Oh gosh, yeah, it's it's really fun. <laughs> well, Adam, till next time. Got to keep Absolutely. us posted. I'd be glad to join you all anytime. Awesome. Yeah. No, we, we'll see what the next season brings. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited I, we'll to start find hearing announcements season. soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm so excited because I have tickets to so many of these shows that I see like in the next two to three weeks. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I can't wait to finally see them. <laughs> and you're going to be on like, uh, I feel like the few weeks after the Tonys, no matter what happens, there's always really great energy in audiences and with casts too. Yeah. So that's going to be great for you. Yeah. I'll have awesome. to wait till September. Oh, yeah. You're a busy lady. <laughs> Just right now, you know, it's the season. We all know we go through seasons that are busy or fallow. So you've got to mm -hmm. be able to pace yourself and enjoy them all. Mm -hmm. September's right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're running out of time, so we'll wrap up there. But thanks so much, Adam. It's always a joy. And our listeners, Thank thanks you. for joining us. I'm Ellen Cribs. And I'm Benita Zahn. We'll check you. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the Everything Theater Podcast. Special thanks goes out to Alice Grinling for our photography and Justin Friello for composing our amazing theme song. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want to share your thoughts or what's going on in your theater community, you can reach out to us on social media or through our email at everythingtheaterpodcast at gmail.com. Till next time. It's everything, everything, everything. everything.